All right, people, today is a special day. I've been waiting to do this for a long time, and it is just perfect timing because our chain, she's got a little bit of movement, and this is basically all the way backed out, and the chain's just stretched too much. It's done for. And on this, we're only running down one in the front, but uh, now we're gonna go down one, up one, and do a 520 conversion. So, it is about to go down. Yeah. So this is the AFAM or AFM. I don't know how do you guys uh, pronounce it across the pond, but um, these are like little secrets here in the States. Um, I know you guys run these on like a lot of the, the BSB bikes and, and the Australian super bikes out there. So we're gonna give it a shot. So this is their kit. It's around $220. Um, I'll put a link down below, you know, so you guys can buy it from Bike Torque Racing. But we have a 15 tooth uh, lightweight steel sprocket for the front, and we have a 42 tooth lightweight aluminum sprocket. This is their new copper color, too. I just think it looks awesome. It's going to look great on the bike. Um, now, before you guys go ahead and go crazy, the reason we're running an aluminum sprocket is because this bike's not for the street. So if we can get a thousand track miles out of it, that's fine we want to definitely have the lightest unsprung weight on the rear wheel possible. So they have their, uh, their premium excess ring chain kit as well. And what's awesome about this kit is they throw in a chain riveter tool to flare the actual rivet to put your own chain on. So you can do this all yourself and we're going to show you how to do it. Everything from cutting the rivets off and pushing the chain link out the easiest way. And we're going to disassemble all this stuff and show you guys how to put a new chain and sprocket. So most of the tools you'll need is this. Um, it is going to vary from us because, you know, we have a safety wired rear axle nut. So we're using, you know, safety wire and pliers. But mostly everything you'll need is a 14 millimeter socket, uh, a 13 millimeter socket. That's for your front sprocket nut. And then a 10 millimeter Allen key. That's going to be when we take the the rear hub off on the bike, that's gonna to be to take the actual sprocket from the sprocket carrier off. You're gonna need those. Uh, we got a die grinder because we're gonna cut it. If you have a chain breaker tool, it works just as good. Of course, a torque wrench and then a breaker bar. We have pulled out the brushes because as you can see, Dorothy has gotten dirty after the six track days that we put on her. You can actually see she ain't rolling smooth. So we're gonna, clean all this stuff up while we have it off and uh, do a nice MotoGP thorough cleaning on her. And uh, that way when we put it back in, it'll have fresh lube, fresh grease, everything. So let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do before we get to the fun playing with power tools and cutting shit off the bike is you're gonna take your 13 mil on a ratchet and you're just gonna break your front sprocket nut loose. Put the bike in gear. Sometimes if they don't break when it's under gear, you may have to have a friend press the back brake for you, but I highly don't recommend sticking nothing in your sprocket. As you can see, it's turning, but one more she went. So definitely try to take it off without, uh, you know, shoving wood and stuff, but sometimes you do have to do little things like that to get these off. Definitely helps if you have an impact around, but you just want to lock up the front sprocket so you can pull this nut. We're not going to pull it all the way out. We're just going to loosen it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take just some old rags or shirts, whatever you got. And we're going to just cover up the expensive parts on the bike. Because when we cut the chain, sparks fly and you just don't want none of that stuff getting on your swing arm rim. So I'm gonna grab a, a couple more rags and cover this up. What we're gonna do, it, do, it doesn't matter where you cut your chain link. So we're just gonna grind off these heads to where it's flat and smooth with the actual uh, link itself. And then we're just gonna pop that link off and push those pins through and we'll be able to pull the whole chain off at once. All right, so now we got the grinder plugged in. We just used some old uh, brown wrapping, you know, like for packages when you're sending them out to do everything in the shirt for close up. So like I say, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grind uh, these two little heads off right here with the grinder.
So now that we have that ground, we're just gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of get it in here and then take a hammer and you're just gonna tap it and the metal will start to break loose. Take your time with it. There's no need to mess up anything that's perfectly fine on there and you'll see that. You'll see the pens start to pop on through. Just like that, your O-ring pops off, both of them with your link, and then you can just push by hand the master link, unwrap all of your stuff, and now you'll be able to just pull the chain, put it back in here, put it back in neutral and you'll be able to just pull the whole chain out by hand, just like that. So now we'll set that to the side. And now that we have the chain pulled off there, we'll go ahead and I'll cut the safety wire, I'll pull off the rear axle nut, and we'll actually pull the wheel off and take off the front sprocket as well. Take some snips. Snip the piece of safety wire. Out. These race torques axle nuts are definitely uh, the best because you can just safety wire around the nut and then put it through to anywhere. So it just makes it a lot easier for safety wire on and off. We're going to do a tire change before our next track day. So I'm going to leave the safety wire off. We're actually not going to safety wire it back on. Now that that is done, you grab your inch and a quarter and your breaker bar and you just loosen it up. that all the way off. These have a washer on them too, so like always keep the same orientation as the washer so it goes back on the same way you took it off. And then just give the axle a slight tap with a soft hammer. Hold the wheel up by hand so it's easier to get the axle out. Now that we have the axle out, we'll put that down. Slightly pull the wheel back and you'll see the caliper bracket right there. It'll step down with it, but you can't pull the wheel out because the actual caliper is holding it back in front of the rim. So what you're gonna do is push forward, and I'm doing this one-handed, but you push forward and the caliper will actually come around the wheel. See how I did that? See how it's kind of pushed out of the way now? And then you'll be able to just slide the wheel back. I literally did that one-handed, guys. So take your time with it. Try not to force it out. Make sure you keep an eye on your spacers when they come out of the wheels. But just like that, the rear wheel is out. We're gonna set this to the side for a second because we are gonna get up in here and clean a lot of that nasty old chain grease, all the rubber off the tires. So I'm gonna get in here with my brushes and, and clean everything pretty thoroughly and then we'll go ahead and get the rear sprocket changed. All right, so I've realized there's actually not a lot of videos on how people clean up stuff like this. So we're gonna kind of show you. So we're gonna grab the nylon brushes, the one big, one small. Just use any kind of soft bristle. You don't want to scratch this. And then any kind of grease will work. 
guys know, I, I sell the greaser. Um, it's just great for bikes because it doesn't, this isn't a plug. The reason I use it is because it takes off grease and it's non-corrosive. So it's good on aluminum and all this stuff. It doesn't damage it if you don't get it all off. So we're just gonna spray all this old chain grease down, put a rag under us so it catches it. Look at all that stuff just falling right off. We do stuff like this because it's not very often you've got the wheel off and time to clean the butt side of the bike. So while it's off, we might as well take advantage of it. Clean all this grease off the swing arm. Also inspect your chain guide, this plastic piece that the chain rides along, because after a few chain swaps, usually they get kind of worn out. You don't want your chain flopping about. So I'll time lapse you guys while we do this. So now that's off, we'll grab the air compressor, hit it with some compressed air, and then we'll get to the cleaning of the wheel slash doing the rear sprocket. Now she's all blown out with air. And as you can see, sometimes it is worth really getting in here and meticulously cleaning your bike. makes all the difference in the world. So the little things definitely preserve it and help the parts last a little bit longer. So just wanted to show you that guys, you know what I mean? Go the extra mile when you're working on your own stuff because not everybody does that. All right, now time to do the rear wheel. Now we got the wheel down on the brake side and we're gonna just pull this out of the little cush. Bobbin's right there. We're gonna go through and inspect, make sure there's no scores, scratches. That all looks pretty good. Dirty as hell, but we're gonna get in and clean that too before we install it. So on this rear sprocket, what you're gonna do is on the back side, you can see there's these 10 mil little uh, Allen key nuts, or I guess they're bolts. And on this side is a 14 mil nut. So. We're gonna grab our two uh, sockets, put them on here, and then take all these five bolts off. So now that last bolt's out, you have the front part of the carrier, then you have this back spacer piece on it as well. So now, man, that's pretty heavy. These are all steel stock. So now we'll set that out of the way and we'll get our new sprocket, but first we're gonna go ahead and give this a thorough cleaning as well. So now that we have clean parts, practically brand new, we're gonna take the new sprocket as well as the old sprocket because on Aprilia, you'll notice that it has this little lip right here. And on the back side, it's smooth. So this side actually goes towards the wheel. We're gonna show you how to install it on the new sprocket carrier because the new sprocket uh, these aluminum sprockets are super light. It has this lip as well. 
and then nothing on the back side. So how you're gonna install it is this goes into your sprocket carrier like so. And then you take your retaining ring, put it on the back side like that, line up these bolts, and we're gonna start reinstalling it. hex heads you'll notice there's a little groove where it fits into that retaining ring so make sure you uh, get those lined up when you're torquing them down otherwise it won't be correct New sprocket, hub carrier is all cleaned, everything. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna clean up the bushings and just a little bit of grease right there. And then we are gonna re-grease our bearing and then we'll put everything back together and we'll get the rear wheel installed back on the bike. So now that we got everything cleaned up and aired out, what we're gonna do is we have our grease gun and we're just going to grease all the parts of the bearing. This is high temp waterproof grease that we use. And yes, it's gonna get a little messy, but get that on in there like that. Then what you're gonna do is we're gonna take our new sprocket and our old sprocket carrier. We're gonna do the same thing. Put a little grease on your finger. You're gonna rub it in here. A big thing is you're gonna make sure if you use water and degreaser to clean this out, that you use a compressor to get all the moisture out because it will rust on the bearings and when it gets hot, it will basically weld them to each other. So. I like to put a nice thin layer, even on the seal. You don't need to go overboard, but all through here, put a nice layer. And then on this, you're gonna grab your small spacer for the back side of the sprocket carrier. We got enough on our finger. Now this is metal on metal. So it's one of those things to where, yeah, you really don't have to grease it, but whenever it's metal on metal like that, I like to put a thin layer just so it lubricates it and whenever we have to take it off again, if under high heat and friction, it doesn't weld itself to that. So as you can see, it's nice and fluid to the bearing the seal. Just one more little bit now on the inside of the spacer, like this. Everything's seated, everything's greased, and as you can see, there's not grease absolutely everywhere that's gonna make a mess. So now what we're gonna do is you're gonna line up with your bushings, but what I like to do is just because we clean this with the greaser, the bushings, yeah, they tend to dry out a bit, but inside on these metal pieces, the same way like we did with the spacer, we're gonna just put a little bit of grease on these pieces so it'll go in there, it'll still be you know flush and fluid, there's not gonna be any movement. But then if we ever got to, you know, we're going to pull this off all the time for sprocket changes. So it just makes it a lot easier so that it doesn't weld itself in there. So we're going to put the sprocket down on the ground gently. The same thing. Use grease. And then we're just going to put a little bit on each one. Make sure you get the debris off of there. And then... Let's go around it and make sure it's looped up nicely. Try not to make a mess with this stuff. And if you spill it anywhere, just grab a rag and clean it up immediately. Like I say, make sure there's no debris. All right, now those are all looped up. 
Now we can line up our sprocket and you'll see how it nice and easy goes in there. So now it's time to do our outer spacer, which is the fatter one of the two that came out on this side. And just like before, this one has like a little lip, so it kind of locks into the rubber seal. But what these spacers actually do is in here, you can kind of see in there, there's a little channel around the seal that when you pack it with grease, and when you put the grease on the axle and put it in here, it actually causes the grease to kind of self relubricate itself, if you will. So we always put a nice dab of grease in here. We're gonna put more on the axle, but it's nice to just pack a little bit of grease on there for your spacers. Like so. And then we take our spacer that's already greased up, put it in like there. Take your clean rag and just wipe off any heavy excess of the grease on the seal. And your seal's pressed in, nice and smooth. And you'll feel, you turn it a few times and it, like I say, it kind of picks up that grease in that channel. And the spacer actually moves just like a bang, nice and smooth. And then one more dabble of grease, just to line the inner side here. So you don't have to put such a thick layer on the axle. So the outside's done, we'll flip it around. Just like before, it also has a channel on this seal. So, nice dabble of grease. Put it inside your bearing on the channel. Put it all inside there. Push it down in on the seal. And then, Basically, I, it might be the same size as the other one. I've never checked it out, but this also has a lip on it, the same way like the seal on the other side. And this is on the brake side. You're gonna do the same thing, like coating on the spacer. And then press your spacer into the seal. Now that we got that side done, take your rag, Clean up the outside of the seal. Make sure the bearing, or excuse me, make sure the spacer doesn't come out when you're cleaning it, because then you're just cleaning the grease that you just put on it. So I kind of press it down just to make sure that when once this is set in the bike, that there's nothing flinging around on the brakes or anything like that. So now that we got that done, it's time. We can take the wheel and tire and put it back through. And what we're doing is we're just setting it up. So like earlier, when we took it off, take the caliper, kind of move it to the side, get the wheel in here. Don't rush it so your nice lube spacers don't get all discombobulated. Then before it's all the way in, you're gonna cock it to the left, or excuse me, to the right. And then, now that's there. Pull it back just to make sure it's lined up with the disc brake. And then the seal. And if you can see over here, you'll see it's back on. Right there on that little guide pen. And it's up against the spacer and nothing's pushed in. On this side, the spacer is right up against it. That's what helps when you put fresh grease on there too. It keeps your parts intact. All right, so what you're gonna do with the chain breaker tool is you have these two pieces, basically like a flatter side and a circular one. The circular one is the front, and this little lineup here, you can see it has like a double step down, is gonna fit over that master link and push it over the rivet pins, basically, that are, that are right here. So the back plate, you're gonna have it just where this little line is. You're gonna have it line up with the back rivets like that and then you're gonna have the front side I'm put this master link like this get it position
position that. And then this over the master. And then the two provided bolts with the riveter kit. Screw it in. We're gonna show you the whole process and everything with this kit. You do kind of have to be careful because that master link will fall out from behind there. So we'll get those started on there. And basically to start, the back is going to be the only one to line up with the rivets. So the front, you're going to have to get it in position where you want it. So we kind of slide it and check it that it's lined up and it is still lined up. So now we're gonna start applying some pressure to where now it should hold in place like so. And then you can either grab a crescent wrench. We're using the old rainy rusty pliers to hold the backside. And you're gonna start tightening it up. And we'll start doing what's called the AB method. So you tighten that one up. Tighten this one up, and then you're gonna tighten this one up, and then we're gonna tighten this one up. And now you should be able to take this off, and we're just gonna check on the master link. but you should be able to pull it in the link beyond there. See how it's now pressed over and the grease helps with it slide through like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compress it a little bit more. All right, so one important job for these flare style rivets, as you can see, is having a micrometer. So usually on these flare style rivets, they like about two mil to be out. So we are going to take the micrometer and see, Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So right now, we're about a millimeter and a half. I don't know if you can see that. It's about one and a half millimeter, and we need to go to about that second mark right there. So we're gonna put the chain riveter tool back on and get these to where they need to go perfectly. You can see on this side, we're almost two mil. So we'll tighten that down a little bit until we get two mil flared, not flared, but two mil of that piece sticking out of that link. All right, so now we just turn our chain riveter tool around to where you have this little pointy piece right there. That's gonna be facing where the chain pieces came through and we're gonna basically rivet those in. So get that thing lined up with that. Back side, same way, and holding it. So you're gonna put in your bolts again. Trying to keep it lined up. Still in there. It calls for, we want 2.7 to, to 2.9 on these rivet heads. So we wanna spread it out with this rivet tool, or excuse me, with this flare tool, and then that will be within spec. So we're gonna grab our channel locks to hold it on the back, and we're gonna start A, B, No need to rush through this part because too tight of a chain, it's going to kink. And then you're going to have issues with it rotating around the sprockets. So let's go ahead. That's number one done. We'll go ahead and see how we're flared on it.
All right, and you can see it starting to be flared out like that, so the link won't come off. All right, as you can see right there, we are about 5.8 millimeter. So I messed up earlier and said 2.8, 2.9. It's 5.8 to 5.9. And we'll line that up with the next one. And it's, it's nice to do one at a time, like I say, just to make sure you're not tightening it too much. So, put our chin locks back on there, and we will do the AB method again with the bolts. on the dot so that one is flared perfectly we just need to uh, give a touch on this other one here time we are now at six perfectly and six perfectly on the flare so that's good we also just make sure there's no kinking or binding as you can see our chain is moving just like the rest of it no kinks no binds and we'll pull this chain tool off of here now, of course, it's not set up and adjusted yet, but we put it through and just make sure there's no kinks. You wanna check around the sprockets and make sure there's no kinks or hangups in the link. I always check the front, check the, uh, check the rear. So now that that's good, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll uh, adjust our, our chain tension and uh, basically put it back together. She's done. All right, so now to do our chain adjustment, we are going to tighten our chain adjusters. And I like to move them to a line just for a starting point. And then do the other side, put it to the same line. So it lines up here in the same place as it lines up on that one. So we put that there. And as you can see, we still have way too much. So adjust it a little bit more. Now it's too tight. That's a good tension, but once the bike compresses, it's gonna be a little too tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right there, one, two, three, four, on the fifth marker. 
because also once you tighten down the axle nut, it does like to uh, tighten as well. So then we'll move this adjuster right there to the fifth marker. Let's check our slack. That's about perfect. So like I say, it seems a lot, you want about an inch and a quarter uh, to an inch and three eighths with the bike unloaded. So basically up here on the stand like that and we're getting about an inch so to the swing arm there at that point, we are at 62 millimeters. And then with it all the way up, we're at 32 and a half millimeters. So about 30 millimeters, that's still within spec. Um, it is gonna stretch just a little bit. And like I say, once we tighten this down, it will tighten a little bit as well, moving that in and torquing it. So we'll check it after that. And if it still needs to be adjusted, then we'll go ahead and adjust it then. So now we're doing the rear axle nut. a lot better and our chain slack is looking perfect now with it torqued down you can look at it there's no kinks in the chain you will see none of them kinked so everything was within spec it's all clean nice and new so then all we have to do is like I say we run safety wire on the rear axle nut so we'll end up safety wiring this and put it back to the way it is. But that's it folks. That's how you do a chain and sprocket kit on basically any motorcycle. If you want to do a 520 conversion, you know, if you want to do OEM. And then what we do is we actually take a brush and we clean a lot of this white lithium grease off of here and put an actual, you know, uh, the waterproof high temp grease that we use and a little bit of wax to lock it into the O-rings. And uh, basically that's how it is. Definitely stay tuned guys because next time in next video, let me show you guys what we got. This is a nice little package from one of our uh, sponsors for the channel that I'll tell you more next video. Boy, we got some carbon fiber stuff in here. But the biggest thing is we got wangs. So if you're not a fan or if you're not subscribed, please definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, turn your bell notifications on so you guys can stay up to date with us. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you know all the whole spiel. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next video.